Welcome to Kotlearn. This video is part of a series where we're building Minesweeper with Compose Multiplatform. Whilst it's designed to be useful on its own, there may be some references to earlier episodes. Applying global padding to an app using Compose can be done with Composition Local. This is a feature that allows us to define and share values across the entire composition tree without explicitly passing them as parameters. Think of it like a dependency injection mechanism for Compose, but scoped just to your UI tree. Let's say you want to define global design tokens, so padding, typography or colours. Instead of passing these values through every component, you can simply provide them at the top level and access them anywhere within your app. Let's take a look at the benefits of Composition Local. You can manage global values from a single source. This can ensure that your app looks consistent throughout. It reduces clutter in UI functions by eliminating repetitive parameters. Your Composition Locals can be scoped to specific parts of the UI tree, allowing for overrides when needed. Now let's take a look at defining a Composition Local. Here's our padding data class. It defines various padding sizes like tiny, small, normal and so on. We then create a composition local named local padding and initialize it with a default instance of padding. This ensures that we always have padding values to fall back on. Take this example. A second list item can have zero padding by wrapping it with the composition local provider function and providing a new instance of the padding class. Another example is to have padding that's scalable. We can achieve this by having a helper function within the padding class that takes a scale factor. This can then be provided to whichever section of the app needs to have scaled padding. Now I'll show you how I used this within Minesweeper K to ensure a consistent UI. Right, so we'll start by creating somewhere to house our composition local. We'll do that in our UI module. So we first need to create the directories for the common main uh, source and we'll add the package and this will be ui.core so in here we'll create padding.kt and within this we need a data class and this is just going to hold all of our pattern values that we can use throughout the app. So we'll just call this padding and in here we can just add add some uh, some values in. We'll say tiny which will be 8. We'll have small. These are just going to go up in increments of 4. So normal this will be what's used in most places of 16. We'll also have big and lastly we'll have large. So these are essentially going to be the default values for whenever we use padding.tiny.small and so on. So we'll actually create the composition local so we can call this local padding and this we will use composition local of and here we can just provide an instance of this data class noting that this is just now using all of the default values that we've just provided. And next we'll do exactly the same thing but for dimensions. So this will be dimensions.kt and we'll first need a data class. And I'll speed this up but I'm basically just going to add some values that are going to be used throughout the app so just a range of different sizes for standard views or composables and I'll also add sizes for icons. And we need to create a composition local for the dimensions using this data class. So exactly the same as we did with the padding. We'll say local dimensions equals composition local of and we can pass through an instance of this data class. So now we'll see this in action. We'll go back to our menu feature module. And within the menu screen we can add, uh, use this for the buttons. So here we can create a button modifier 
and within this we can give it a pattern so either side of the button we'll say a horizontal and say a local padding dot current dot normal and we'll follow that with a fill max width so we just fill in the width of the screen we can apply this modifier to each of the buttons so modifier equals button modifier we can clean this code up in a little bit so we run that might be quite hard to see actually but if you look down the left and right hand side you can see that the there's a padding of 16 applied so we'll do a little bit of code cleanup now we'll extract this text button out into its own class we'll say menu button and inside here this can be internal and we'll need to pass through the text the action for when it's clicked and that should be everything so here we'll still use a text button for now so now that that's extracted out within the menu screen we'll swap each of these instances of text button for our menu button we can move the text we can sort out all the parameters so that should be working correctly now we don't really want the width of this button to span the full size of the window so if you're on a desktop application you don't really want your buttons to be this big so what we can do is set before we use fill max width we'll say width in and we'll give it a max maximum width and this we can get from our local dimensions we'll add a new field we'll say max width large and what this one is going to do uh, I'll add it first and then we can run and discuss it. So if we go to our local dimensions and add max width large. Sorry, we'll say max width small for this one. And we'll say 300. And now if we run this we can see that the buttons are only coming out 300 wide and one final thing we'll show as discussed uh, towards the start of the video if we go to our app screen the the composition locals can be overrided so if I wrap this menu roots uh, sorry it'll have to be in a composable part if I wrap the nav host with composition local provider and I can pass in local padding provides and then use an instance of our padding class inside here if we change normal to zero and we'll also provide a new instance of our dimensions within here we'll say max width small equals 2000 just to make it clear we can wrap everything within this once we run it we'll see that it's no longer going to be using the default values anywhere inside this scope it's going to use these instances that we've provided so we'll run this and as you can see there's now no padding either side and the max width is you know greater than the screen size so it's just filling the screen this was a bit of a shorter episode this week but make sure to subscribe as next week we'll be creating the ui for the minesweeper board thanks for watching